Thank you for uh, showing interest in the introduction to Axum course. Uh, before we get into uh, into it, I want to talk about some prerequisites, some things that if you have or you do, um, will just make things a lot easier for us. Um, so, first of all, I don't teach Rust here, so I, I do have like a lot of sort of introductory explanations of things, but it's not really good as a true introduction to Rust. So if you've never touched Rust at all, you haven't read anything from the book on Rust, or this is going to be your first experience with it, this might not be the best course for you. I would highly recommend starting with the book. So if you go to the Rust homepage and you just type in, uh, click the learn button, there is a link to the book. Um, and uh, that's an excellent sort of resource to sort of get, get started with it. And then, then we'd love to have you back here. Um, on top of that, uh, the programming, you know, this isn't a good, uh, introduction to just programming at all. So, uh, if you've never programmed anything, uh, at all with any language, highly recommend you learn something. If, in fact, you could just go and learn the rest from that book, uh, that I mentioned previously, and then, uh, then come back here. Uh, now having worked in with an API, so like some kind of web development can be helpful, both front end or back end. It doesn't matter if you've produced an API or if you've consumed one, just sort of knowing what an API is and the very generics of how it works uh, can be very helpful. Also, having terminal and shell experience is really helpful. Knowing how to just navigate through the command line to you know launch our Rust projects, to run commands. Um, obviously those are extremely helpful as well. Uh, we do use Docker at in the project for this course. So if you're not gonna be running with the project, well, it's not completely true because we have, we use Docker also to spin up a database uh, that'll be useful in the second half of the course and the project. Uh, and that will allow us to connect to and uh, and sort of like use that and it'll be very difficult to follow along without a database set up so having docker installed and uh, being just like you don't need to be like an expert you don't even need to be um proficient at docker you just need to sort of like know what docker is and have it installed um another thing if you have a uh, postgres running on your local system be aware that running those Docker commands will start up another Postgres instance and will attempt to connect to the same port. Now, normally there'll be an error if you connect to the same port or not, but I have had a community member who accidentally had two versions of Postgres running at the same time and it caused a lot of confusion. So if you do have a localhost uh, Postgres running on port 5432, which is Postgres's default port, I would highly recommend either changing that in the Docker compose file to be with just some other port locally, or um, or just uh, just turning off your local database until you're done with the course. And then finally, uh, familiarity with, uh, with web dev devs type stuff. And all I mean for that is what JSON is, how it looks like, the very passing rules of JSON, uh, and then also HTTP response codes, sort of like 200 is okay, uh, 400 is the user's fault and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and that should be it. If you know those things, uh, this should be, um, this should be a perfectly fine course to go through and, uh, and, uh, get going with. Thank you very much. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you in the course. Bye.